Well, we have two different sets of muscles that participate in our breathing in or inhalation and breathing out, which is termed exhalation. So let's examine first the muscles that help us breathe in. The costal muscles are those muscles largely associated with the rib cage. Between the ribs, we have muscles that are called intercostal muscles that help the rib cage expand and move up and out. This draws in air with the lungs. And this is a type of breathing that uh, we might call chest breathing. We have another very important muscle that is called the diaphragm. And the diaphragm is a dome-shaped muscle that sits underneath the lungs here. And when you breathe in, the diaphragm flattens out. Here's another picture of the diaphragm down here. And when this uh, particular muscle uh, contracts, it uh, draws in air. There's been some studies of the, uh, the effect of these different sets of muscles. It's largely found that chest breathing accounts for about 40% of lung capacity and diaphragmatic breathing, or that is breathing using the diaphragm, contributes the additional 60%. So you can see the diaphragm is very important for our breathing, and it's important that you learn how to do that. Now, normally, when we breathe in, we use our muscles to breathe in, and we just relax, and the air goes out. However, with playing a wind instrument, there is a good deal of force that has to push through the wind instrument. Here we have a little oboe reed pictured. And we need to use the abdominal muscles, the abdomen, the muscles in, in this area, to push out, and as well as con contributors from other areas here, but to push out, out the air. The diaphragm never pushes out air. The diaphragm only brings in air. The abdominal muscles are the ones that push out air. Now, I often use the analogy of a bottle when describing a nice slow breath to beginners. We should first fill the bottle from the bottom. That means using the diaphragm to pull in the air. And then as the bottle fills, as it were, as the, uh, the lungs expand, we allow the air to uh, increase in the chest cavity, allowing the, the chest, the intercostal muscles, the costal muscles to participate in, in that sort of breathing. Obviously, when you take a very quick breath, both the uh, diaphragm and the costal mother muscles are uh, breathing all together in one very swift breath. OK, it's time to lie down on the floor and practice this other method. OK, so get down on the floor, put your hand on your abdomen, and we're going to get a sense of the proper movement of the diaphragm. The diaphragm moves down and pushes the internal organs out. Ah, oh, that's so relaxing. I think I could just go to sleep there. Uh, but it's important for you to understand the proper use of those muscles and how how, uh, how that feels with those muscles expanding. We don't want you breathing from the shoulders. Shoulders participate in breathing, but only after the lower part of your body expands, the lungs expand from the base, and then expand up through the chest cavity, and the shoulders just simply rise up there. We want to avoid chest breathing only. We want to use the entire lung capacity that you have. The bassoon is a wind instrument that needs a lot of air. Okay, we're coming to the end of our second lesson, and it's time once again to take the bassoon apart. Uh, I showed you in the first lesson how to take apart the other bassoon, and I'm going to take apart my bassoon now. Everything needs to be stowed in the right place, so I put away the crutch, the handrest. 
You'll notice my case is a little bit smaller. Now next I take the bocal and I actually blow out the water out of the bocal. Put down a piece of paper here so I don't get things too mussed up. Put away the bocal. Next comes off the bell joint. I take off my particular extra little contraption here. Stow that away. Off my guard. Next is the long joint. Long joint coming off. Now, I keep a cloth between my two joints to avoid the joints rubbing against each other. Next, we take off the tenor joint. And this is the thing I wanted to make sure you really saw. When you take off the boot joint, keep it up, be sure that you dump the water out from the little hole. Don't have much in the way of water here. This part is lined. There's a little rubber lining that goes down there. This part is not. And you want to avoid any water touching wood. Well, now it's time to swab out the bassoon. Again, you put down the swab in the big hole. Comes out the little hole. Pull through. And similarly, we swab from the big end first. Make sure your swab is so nothing is tangled up. And then we pull it through. Pull it through this end. And we have just swabbed our bassoon out. Mm -hmm.